morning, BCF. Uh, tayo po ay muli na namang nagkasama-sama online para purihin na ating Panginoon. Bago, ta bago tayo kumanta, ipagkatiwala natin sa Lord ang gawain na ito. Yung mga songs na ating awitin, mag-glorify ang kanilang pangalan. So let's pray. So, Father in Heaven, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to worship and praise your name again. Salamat po, Panginoon, dahil nandito muli kami. Uh, you have proved your faithfulness to us throughout the week and here we are again we're gonna sing songs to worship you samahan niyo po kami and may you be glorified this is our prayer in Jesus name Amen so samahan niyo po kami ayaw yung sabay sabay magpuri sa ating Panginoon
the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. So, ang sarap ba we nito? Lalo na kapag we reminisce or we, we think of the goodness of our God, of our God uh, despite the pandemic, despite of the different situations that we have, kung tayo pupuntay na sitwasyon, pero sa kabila ng lahat ngayon, masarap itong awitin dahil uh, itidiklar natin na pakagpunin ang ating Panginoon. So, let's sing this song. Sabayin po kami. Purihin natin ang Panginoon. Salamat, Panginoon.
changing. You're still yesterday, the same and today, Lord. In the future, ito mga promises ni Lord na mangyayari pa lang sa inaharap ay alam namin na yung matutupad ito. So, Panginoon, salamat po sa pagkakataong pinigay niyo sa amin na mawaitan namin kayo, papasalamatan namin kayo through a song. So, we pray that you may continue to move our hearts and patayin niyo po mensahe na aming maririnig sa umagang ito at magsilbing po itong talakasan namin spiritually kayo maintindi sa aming puso at may atlay namin sa aming buhay, Lord. So, we lift your name on high. We thank you, Lord, for this praise and worship. And we pray, Lord, na kayo ang siyang naitaas namin at glorify namin sa umagang ito. Ito pong aming dalangin sa pangalan namin, Panginoon Jesus. Everybody say, Amen. of the BCM family. Today, we're going to share our new theme, The Triumphant Christian Life. The topic today, which has been chosen, is an impact-filled life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We give you the honor and glory. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to speak through me so that I would be able to share with my brothers and sisters the meaning and significance of the topic, an impact-filled life. How can we work to ensure that our lives help influence others? Give me the words, Lord Jesus, to share with my brothers and sisters so that we can have a practical application of an impact-filled life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. The essence of this is really we must not conform to the world. We must look at things in the context of what the Lord is saying to us to ensure that our life led will be able to influence others. It's important for us to share the Christian gospel, insist that transformation really is possible, that we can be transformed. Never easy, rarely quick, but possible. It begins to happen Anytime people become intensely serious about learning from Jesus and how to arrange our lives. John Ottberg says, The life you've always wanted is that based on living with Jesus. And through him, we can lead an impact-filled life. And it's important for us as we go about our daily lives and have this great desire to tr be transformed and this lies deep in every human heart. Transformation reflects the heart of God and his desire for our lives to be transformed. Transform is really changing. How can we change our life? Jesus paid a price for us. So we must have faith in Jesus. The price he paid at Calvary for us, dying on the cross. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 9, he says, and Paul was writing to the 
people of Galatia, my dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. So the cry is there that God wants us to change. Paul was informing the Galatians that Jesus suffered and it's important that we look and see how we can lead this impact-filled life. My little children, for whom I am against <clears throat> suffering birth pangs until Christ is completely and permanently formed, molded within you. This is the Amplified Version and the way it puts it across to show Jesus suffering for us. So how do we experience this transformation? How do we grow? Well, it's by spiritual discipline. We must discipline ourselves, studying God's work. It's an activity that we can help gain the power to live our life as Jesus taught us and how we should model ourselves. It's imperative that we place our faith in Jesus to help us to be transformed and to do the things that the Lord has asked us to do. So the big idea, brothers and sisters, God's desire is that we would be transformed into the image of Jesus, bearing the fruits of the spirit of our lives. Changing. And why God wants us to change? It's so that we can influence others. It, God has given us this great commission in Matthew chapter 28. Go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. We can only go into the world and make disciples of other nations by having faith in Jesus, trusting his word. So the fruit of the Spirit is important for us. And this will happen only when we engage in spiritual discipline, fighting the plans of the enemy. But we can only fight the plans of the enemy is when we believe God's word, the word that God has given to us. So the main point for us for our spiritual discipline and how can we overcome it? It says very clearly in Galatians chapter 9, and I read from the New International Version, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, and drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we will not inherit the kingdom of God if we do not follow God's word. So our trust must be in God. And again, after Christ, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 tells us, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, faithfulness. So by us putting our trust in the Lord, gaining the fruit of the Spirit, that can help us to lead and impact life that will help us to transform and this is what we are talking about Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 and verse 5 chapter 5 verse 22 is telling us how we can be transformed if we lack the spirit the fruit of the spirit you are in need of change we need to grow and the only way where we can grow is turning back to God's word, helping us. And let's look at very clearly what it is saying. Our measure of spirituality. Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 12 tells us, To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you 
that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tent of all I get. You see, the Pharisee is bragging. That's what we've got to avoid, brothers and sisters. We've got to follow what Jesus is telling us. Praying or reading your Bible doesn't automatically make you more spiritual. And it doesn't affect how much you love God, but is meditating on God's word. Looking closely at ourselves and trying to ensure that we can overcome. And that will help us to discipline ourselves. Romans chapter 12, I repeat, is it, it God is telling us, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We must renew our mind. Think godly. Help ourselves. And in this way, we can overcome the difficulties that we face in this life. As we read our Bible, we need to pray, to worship and to serve God. It's all about God, putting our trust in God. And that will help us in our transformation, inside and out. As we cooperate with the working and leading of the Holy Spirit within us, we can overcome. Nothing is impossible for God. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 it points us, Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So you can see it is telling us, God is the one who will help us to overcome the difficulties. In John chapter 14 verses 23 to 26 it says, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. You see the promise? Jesus will come and make his home in you. And that's important. Anyone who does love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father. So John, the apostle, was saying very clearly, those are not his words. It is the word of the Lord. Trusting in Jesus. That will help us in our transformation. So what are uh, the practice of spiritual discipline? Let's look at this very clearly and define what it really means to us. Spiritual discipline. Discipline requires engagement, engaging with the Lord. And engagement means intentionally doing the things what the Lord says. Remember the Lord promised us very clearly in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. What can man do to you? So to lead this impact-filled life, what we need to do is put all our trust in God. Follow what he is saying. Stop what we are doing. The way we behave. Listen to what the word is telling us. And obey. And that will help us to overcome. Why are they helpful for transformation and growth in our life? Well, it's very simple. Abiding in Jesus' prayer. It helps us. In John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5, it tells us in verse 4, Remain in me and I will remain in you. So if we remain with the Lord, he will remain with us. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. So a clear illustration, we have to be attached and attached to the Lord. He is the upholding of us. He is the root of what we should do. And in verse 5 it says, Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So God is again warning us. We cannot be productive unless we are in the Lord. We cannot 
change anyone. And that's why it's so great being street pastors. We're able to go out and share God's word. But we walk in God's light, in God's way. Because God tells us, I am the vine. You are the branches. So we are part of the Lord. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So without the Lord, we can do nothing. We need to remain in the Lord at all times. And you know, it's great how we, in this difficult time, the BCM family, we are able to share every Thursday, learning from each other about God's Word. Bible study, extremely important. Knowing God's will, and it's important because it reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have been tasted that the Lord is good. So we are like babies. Once we are with the Lord, He will feed us. That milk which will be given to us is God's word to help us so that we can lead this impact life. Worship. Lifting the name of the Lord. And it's great. At the start of our service today, we gave God the glory. He is the one. He is our Lord, our Master. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29, it says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. So you see how important it is for us to lead this impactful life. It's only by worshiping the Lord, gaining that worship. So when we are worshiping the Lord, think clearly the words we are using. Our service should be diligent, giving unto the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 reminds us of this giving. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the Lord has prepared you and me, brothers and sisters, to do good work. Work that will show and represent the love of our Lord Jesus. Doing the things he has asked us to do. So, you know, everything we do, we must be able to be very clear in our motive. It's giving. Not giving and hoping that we will receive. Giving and giving freely to the Lord, to our brothers and sisters, so that we can share. And in this pandemic time, we should be looking at how can we help our brothers and sisters. What can we do? You know, we need to share and pray for one another. Fellowship, an extremely important part in helping us to lead an impactful life. Connecting with one another, connecting with brothers and sisters in Christ. Exodus chapter 20 verse 24 reminds us, Make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Your sheep and goats and your cattle, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. You see, so God is saying to us, he will bless us. Very important, and that's what we should remember. In Exodus chapter 29, verse 28, this is always to be a, the perpetual share from the Israelites for Aaron and his sons. It is the contribution the Israelites are to make to the Lord from their fellowship. So you see how the Israelites had to give to make sure that our giving is important, imperative. It reminds us in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 5. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. 
So when we're making a sacrifice, it must be honest. It must be with integrity and doing it unto the Lord. So our fellowship offering is clear, it's succinct, and it must be offered in that way. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 17, it says, He is to present the basket on leavened bread and is to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to the Lord, together with its grain offering and drink offering. So brothers and sisters, we've got a responsibility to share with our brothers and sisters who is in need. We cannot say, enjoy your meal, knowing fully well they've got nothing to do when we are able to help. So our fellowship offering is extremely important. Whatever little we've got, we must be able to share that. So our fellowship offering, the sacrifice celebrated for the covering of our sin, forgiveness by God and the restoration of a right and meaningful relationship with God and life itself. So we must be clear in our motives. Judges chapter 20 verse 26 tells us, Then all the Israelites and the whole army went up to Bethel. And there they sat weeping before the Lord. They fasted the day until the evening and presented bird offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. So you can see, we must be in prayer, be prayerful and think what we're doing and how can we help others. In Judges chapter 21 verse 4 it tells us, Early the next day the people built an altar and presented their burnt and fellowship offering. So we can offer our fellowship offering. And what does it really mean by fellowship? It's from the Greek word koinonia. Koinonia means the sharing of things in common with another. So what we've got to do is to share. You know, it's great when we in the BCM family have our fellowship gathering. And this is something we should be doing on a regular basis. It's sharing what we've got. The little thing we've got in the mornings, coffee, coffee sharing with biscuits. That's koinonia. After service, we're sharing. So we can talk and can have together that fellowship and to help us to lead that impact life. And it's distinctly spiritual, meaning that believers has got a responsibility with the Lord. Fellowship with God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's important that we looked at, look at the scriptures to help us to understand what we mean by Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Lord. In John chapter 17 verses 21 to 26. And I read from the New International Version. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be with us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I believe uh, you have given them glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and that have loved them as you have loved me. So clear illustration that when we do, we walk, we walk the walk of the Lord, doing what he has said. So that we can demonstrate that he is the one who sent us and we are doing good. In verse 24 it tells us, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. So to lead that impact life, we need to ensure that we are doing what the Lord is saying to us. Righteous Father, it says in verse 25, through the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in all that you love that you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So you see, it's very clear we must be the salt and light of the world. That's what the Lord has commanded us to do. And that's how we can show our fellowship with others, 
by doing what we think is right and acting in accordance with God's word. And we must have fellowship with other believers. In Acts chapter 2 verse 42, it tells us very clearly of how what we should do and what we should ensure we do. It says in Acts chapter 2 verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. So a clear illustration in Acts, how we must do. This is why it's important that we have fellowship. And today is the first Sunday. We will be having fellowship together, albeit by remote. It's important that we participate in the breaking and sharing of bread. In 1 John chapter, 3, chapter 1 verse 3 it says, We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So our fellowship must be with the Lord. In verse 7 it tells us, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So Jesus' blood will purify us. Fellowship is important because fellowship will help us to illustrate the very nature of God himself. In John chapter 13 verse 35 it tells us that we must be and do what the Lord is asking us to do. It says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So fellowship is important. It is reminding us what the Lord is saying to us. Everyone will know that you are his disciple, that he has sent you to do his good works. In Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2 it says, For God's example, therefore, as dearly love children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering for the sacrifice of God. So you see, God himself has done what he's asking us to do. He's making sure that we do. And it says in 1 John chapter 5 verses 1 to 10, This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God will purify us. We need to ensure that we confess our sin. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So God is helping us to have fellowship so we can encourage each other, we can build up each other, and we can edify each other. So our mission should be uh, to ensure that we lead this impact-filled life is reaching people for Jesus. At the start of this year, we committed ourselves to bring in 52 people into the BCM family. Pandemic came about, but we still have a responsibility to ensure. Myself, I'm on the streets every Saturday night, walking and sharing the love of God. We can do things to ensure that we're doing. So our mission should be clear. And BCM, we've got a mission of what we should do, is reaching to others. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. I said, mentioned that earlier. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you 
always to the very end. So God is with us. Once we've got that heart and that commitment to do with the work of God, God will be with us. And he's there to share with us at every stage. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So our job is to go and make disciples of all nations. Means more than bringing people to Christ. Jesus wants us to show our love, our kindness. And you know it's great to be a member of the BCM family. We've got the SIAC program. We help the families of the SIAC program. We brought them to Christ. But our, it's our responsibility to continue to help them. To do as much as we can to ensure that their life prosper as well. It means continuing to deal with them, teach them and inspire them. It's great to know that we've got people like Gladys who is sharing with the SIAC moms and dads and helping to continue to grow them until they become so filled with delight in studying God's word that they will continue to be disciples, learners for the rest of their lives. That's the goodness. That's the way we're making these great disciples, sharing God's word. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and his fellowship of sharing in his sufferings and becoming like him. So we must share in God's suffering. People will ridiculous, ridiculous, but our trust, our faith must continue with the Lord and in that way we can overcome. So what have I tried to illustrate to you today brothers and sisters? It's God's words helping us so that we can lead an impact-filled life. So people can see and imitate us. Charles Swindoll told us intimacy with the Almighty says tragically very little in this hurried and hassled age promotes such intimacy. We have become a body of people who look more like a herd of cattle on a stampede than a flock of God beside the green pastures and still waters. We are busy, busy doing lots of things, forgetting God's word. Busy stands for being under Satan's yoke. Brothers and sisters of the BCM family, I urge you, study God's word so that we can lead this impact filled life to help us to overcome the difficulties. So let us make a conscious effort, decision to cultivate spiritual discipline, to live our lives in 2020. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord Father God, for your goodness. Help us to ensure that we can lead an impact filled life by studying your words, doing what is good and clarifying the issues so that we can walk in your ways, so that we can have fellowship with each other, help each other to overcome their difficulties. Thank you for the people you place in our lives. Help us to grow them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. The Lord's Supper. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 it says, For I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he gave thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Everyone ought to examine himself carefully before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment unto themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if you were more discerning with regards to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not finally condemned with the world. Brothers and sisters, take a minute to call any wrongs before coming to the Lord's table. This is my body that is broken for you. Take this, for it is my body. Take, eat, this is my body. This is my body which is given for you. The cup is the new covenant in my blood. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This cup is poured out for you in the new covenant in my blood. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I bow before you in humility and ask you examine my heart today. Show me anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any unconfessed sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. I know that I am your beloved child, having received you into my heart and life. And having accepted your death as penalty for my sinfulness, the price you paid covered me for all time and my desire to live for you. As I take the bread representing your life that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me and to all who receive you. I can't begin to fathom the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion, yet you took for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you that your death gave me life, abundant life, now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too receive this bread in remembrance of you. In the same way as I take this cup representing your blood, poured out from a splintered cross, I realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all my sin, past, present and future. Because of your blood shed for me and your body broken for me, I can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that I deserve. You took my punishment. Your pain was indeed my gain and today I remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave me through the blood you spill. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and Amen.